Hi there, it's Dave Spreadbro here again, the international trainer at Amp Software. This is the second part of the filter screencast. In part one, we looked at load, link, write, select frames, interlace, edit, channels, and adjust. We're now going to look at extract. The first filter is negative. This is a simple filter that swaps the intensity value of each pixel. The next few are various methods to extract visual information from an image. These are commonly used with images of fingerprints, footwear or tool marks. Threshold, Adaptive Threshold, Laplace, Sobel, Shah, Canny, Linear and Bilinear. Next we have the Channel Mixer. This gives you the ability to select the various color or intensity levels and manually reduce or increase each one individually in order to extract the required information. Color deconvolution is another filter for extracting information, but this time it deals with color. With parameters to select the desired color, the undesired colors, and the background. It's a powerful method to bring out and highlight the required visual information. Moving on, we have component separation. This only works on color images as it requires the three RGB components. It separates these and you'll be able to select the component that visually brings out the information required. Lastly, in this category, we have Fourier. Viewing an image in the frequency domain is ideal when you need to remove periodic noise caused by perhaps signal interference. It can also provide a useful benchmark in the assessment of detail when perhaps explaining why there is no ability to enhance a certain object. We now head into Verify. The first filter, File Info, takes the summary report from the File Information tool and places it into the filter chain. As such, all this valuable information will be placed directly into your report. Hashcode performs a mathematical calculation on the file to produce a hash value. This ensures data integrity when receiving a file or reloading a project to ensure that the file has not changed. Another verify tool is Macroblocks. Every MPEG-based video is made up of a series of coded blocks. How they have been coded is an important analytical tool to verify what can be relied upon when conducting pixel level analysis. The measure category contains three filters, 1D, 2D, and 3D. For measuring an object on a single axis, you would use 1D. For two axes, 2D. 3D is for measuring an object using three separate axes to calculate an unknown value. This is what would be used to measure the height of a person, for instance. The sharpen category contains two different sharpening filters, the Laplacian and the unsharp masking. The Laplacian has less user settings and is quite basic. On images such as from CCTV, it tends to over sharpen the noise. The unsharp masking filter on the other hand is more configurable. As a result, you may find that this can produce a higher degree of sharpening with less compression artifacting. There are six filters under the denoise category. The first five being averaging, Gaussian, Viner, bilateral, and median. From a practical perspective, I find that quickly applying each of these to an image and comparing the results can narrow them down to an individual filter. The last one, deblocking, simply reduces the visible block artifacts caused in lossy block-based compression. We are now on to deblurring. Motion deblurring allows for the input of certain parameters to identify the point spread function of a blur. A motion blur can be caused by a static camera with a moving object or a moving camera on a static object. Optical deblurring is used to correct the blur caused by incorrect optical settings on a camera. Again, this filter allows for manual control to adjust the point spread function. Nonlinear deblurring is exactly what it says. It's similar to linear, but it allows for precise control of the blur position 
to correct movement in the point spread function. Blind deconvolution is another filter that has its benefits when there is only a slight blur to the image and is best used on images with very low compression as it often accentuates the compression noise. It's useful on old tape-based analog recordings. Lastly in this section, we have turbulence deblurring. In some countries, air turbulence is often captured on footage caused by heat, which is uh, not very often here in the UK. The air disturbance is often more visible when the camera is positioned at some distance from the object of interest. This filter can counteract this effect. Stabilization of an object or a video is catered for within the next category. Local keeps an object at a specific point in the video frame. Global, however, is designed to reduce the bouncing or moving effect across an entire video. This is especially useful when cameras are placed on top of poles in windy conditions. Perspective registration. In part one of the filters screencast, I highlighted correct perspective which enables the adjustment of an object to be parallel with the image plane. Perspective registration allows you to register an object on a number of frames and then to position them all the same. From there, further filters can be applied to integrate all the information together. Funnily enough, we're going to look at integration filters now. Under integrate, the first two filters are temporal and motion smoothing. The difference between the two is that temporal can produce a ghosting effect on objects that are moving. Motion takes those moving objects into account and they are separated automatically from the effect in order to eliminate the ghosting artifacts. The result of both filters remains a video or image sequence. Frame averaging, in contrast, results in a single image, which is an average of all the images or frames used by the filter. The final one is super resolution. This filter is best used with an area selection. It automatically tracks the area and registers each frame. Each frame is then merged and a user defined zoom is applied to increase the resolution of the target area. The result is again a single image. Well we're now on to our final category presentation. Compare original produces a before and after effect. It creates a single image or video so that further filters such as the frame size or the add text filter can be used. Spotlight highlights a certain area in a video and this can be dynamically or manually tracked. Hide selection works in a similar way but instead of highlighting an object it hides it. The filter also has the ability to invert so you could hide everything apart from the area selected. Load Timestamp gives you the ability to select a standard subtitle track that perhaps stores the date and time information. Adding a timestamp allows you to create time information. This is ideal for those situations where you have to display the real time rather than the incorrect time that was on the DVR. The next four are very simple. Adding a logo, such as your agency badge, adding text, adding a shape, or adding a grid. It's worth mentioning that under the add text filter, you have the ability to use predefined macros, such as the file name, the frame number, or the frame type. Change frame rate sets the video to play at a user defined speed. And finally, we have reverse. Well, that just flips the entire sequence to play in reverse. Well, that was a very quick run through of all the filters in the current version, that's 7620 of AMP5. I hope you found it useful. Coming soon, I'll be looking at the information that can be gleaned from an image or video and how you can use that information during your analysis. So, until then, bye for now.